Hurst Spit, without question, is my favourite venue for black bream and at times can be very prolific of this species. I tend to fish here from late July going right through to the end of September. This video includes a session from late August but it's not a particularly typical session so the video mainly concentrates on the rigs I use for catching black bream. It's not that triple shots are unusual, in fact these are pretty common. What is unusual is that I caught all of my fish within an hour of the top of the tide and there was no weed to speak of. I only fish here on neap tides since the weed can be horrendous. Because of the weed I normally arrive just an hour before the top of the tide and usually it's not until about three quarters of an hour down that you can actually start fishing properly. It's different at the end of the spit but I rarely venture up there because of the walk involved so where I am today I'll only fish the ebb. For those unfamiliar with her spit it's the textbook landform found at the western end of the Solent. The map shows its position in relation to the Isle of Wight and major settlements on the south coast. It's at the eastern end of Christchurch Bay and you have to pass through Milford-on-Sea to get to it. It's over a mile and a third in length with a historical landmark and a lighthouse near the end. There is a ferry service operating from Keyhaven which can take you to Hearst Castle and the tip of the spit. It can be very good here for a range of species but I tend to fish the shingle bank itself. Not wishing to walk very far, I normally fish it halfway along the strait before the bend. I should have known that something wasn't quite right by the fact that there wasn't great big banks of weed on the shingle when I arrived. If this spot had been fished recently, that's what I would have expected to find when I'd got here. I normally start by only casting about 60 yards out, expecting to be weeded up straight away. In fact, normally, before it ebbs, I'll only fish with one rod, since two is impossible. Every cast, before it starts to ebb properly, you can expect to be bringing in great big lumps of weed. So, a fish with this in mind. 20 pound braid is usually not strong enough to cope, so my reels are loaded with 30 pound instead. Rods are held high, and they have hollow tips rather than my favoured splice tips, having broken one on weed here before. Rigs have 60 pound main line and 28 pound snuds and they're attached to 7 ounce leads. This is the lightest I'd normally get away with here, but very much overkill today. As well as the lack of weed, there's hardly any tidal pull. And the other thing that's unusual for today is my first cast produced a place just under £2. I've had plenty of undulate rays by mistake, and the odd sold here, but never a place. So the rig I'm clipping up now has larger pieces of rag than I would normally use just in case there's another place around. And since I've found that there isn't any weed at 60 yards I can safely cast much further which I wouldn't normally do until about halfway down the tide. Usually a bag of stones on your tripod is a must given the really strong tidal pull and the weed which can easily drag your rods over but even that's not really needed today so with a rig cast out I just want to run through how I construct my bream rigs and in particular the one I should have been fishing today. The rig on the right is my go-to bream rig for her spit 
The one in the middle is the one I should have been using today and the one on the left is a lighter version with floating beads. Beads cover most of my black bream fishing but I do have some other specialist rigs like the tube boom rigs described in a previous video. So I'll quickly run through the components needed for my standard bream rig. This is a clip down rig with the snuds fixed in place. So cascade swivels are needed and a size 6 rolling swivel. I tend to use imps to attach to whichever lead type I'm using and a carp angler's quick link clip to attach to the leader. I like to use a short section of silicon tubing to cover and protect the knot. My favourite hook type for bream fishing is a Camazon B983 in a size 6 or 8 and I will use any Chino style hooks as an alternative. They just need to be short shanked, round bended and with the hook point bending in slightly. I'll scale up to size 4 or size 2 if I'm expecting larger bream to appear. For these rigs I prefer to use crimps rather than stop knots so these beads are needed. Single beads and holographic sequins are used on the hook lengths. These are made with 15 pound line going up to 30 pound if you expect a lot of weed to be about. 40 pound body line is used. 60 pound if I'm fishing where there's lots of snags or weed is a problem. I start by making the hook lengths so short bits of line are cut off. These are used for stop knots to go behind the beads and sequins on the hook length. The knot itself is fairly straightforward to tie as I hope you can see in this clip. With the stop knot tied, an 8mm bead is threaded up the line. This is followed by a holographic sequin. The hook is tied using either a uni knot, grinner knot or half blood knot. Although I'm not showing this part, all knots ought to be moistened before being tightened. The stop knot is pulled down to be close to the hook, and then all tag ends are cut off. I want these hook lengths to be 35cm long, so I'm measuring the line up to 37cm. The extra 2 cm is used in tying the knot to the cascade swivel or the rolling swivel. The lower two snuds with a larger size 6 hook are tied to cascade swivels. I prefer to use a smaller hook for the upper snud which is tied to the rolling swivel. Once I've got all three hook loops repaired it's then just a question of assembling them onto the main body line. So, a crimp is put on first, followed by a bead, followed by the rolling swivel, followed by another bead, then another crimp. This sequence is then repeated for the other two snuds, which I've speeded up a little bit here. Once this is done, 
an imp is tied onto the end of a body line. I'm using an upper uni knot here. I'd normally wet the knot with saliva before tightening. In my routine for making rigs, I find it helps to have a lead attached at this point before I fix the snuds in position. I place the lower hook in the imp, then put up the components needed to secure that snud in place. It's important to keep the body line and snud tight while you do this, otherwise you won't get the lower crimp in the right position. Only squeeze the crimp when you're happy that you have got it in the right position. It's not so important with a top crimp and sometimes I'd use a stop knot here rather than a crimp if I'm running short of crimps. It is a good idea however to leave a couple of millimetres free between your beads so the swivels can actually move about a little bit. Once everything's in the right place, you can then work on fixing the middle snud. So the middle hook is placed in a cascade swivel and the process I've just shown is repeated. So I speeded this up a little bit. Once all three snuds are in place, I then cut off the body line about 30 centimetres above the top snud. Then it's just a question of tying on the quick link clip and the rig is finished. Another uni knot being used here. quick check to make sure all of the snuds clip up properly then the rig is ready to go for storage. This rig then is the one I should have been using in this filmed session. With a lack of weed I should have swapped over to this one rather than using the heavier rig with larger hooks and stronger line. I'd like to think that rather than being lazy I was just expecting the weed to turn up at some point as the tide was ebbing, but it wasn't to be the case. It's now the top of the tide and I'm expecting the action to pick up, but that also wasn't to be the case. As I'm baiting up here, you'll notice a spinning rod lying against my rucksack. I used it a couple of times during this session, but unfortunately the footage never got saved. I set it up with a dexter wedge, because as I arrived and was setting up my main rods, I saw a half decent fish jump close in. Expecting it was a bass, I had a go for it, but I didn't get any takes. However, this rod did find its uses a little bit later on. It's a pity I haven't got the footage to show this, but I did catch a mackerel by accident on the bream rig. This is quite a common occurrence with a holographic sequence flashing in the water. If there are shoals of mackerel about, it's quite likely you will get one or two on the drop and that happened this session. So since I wasn't expecting to catch the bream until well into the ebb, I gave the spinner a go for half an hour and immediately having caught that mackerel on the bream rig, I caught one straight away chucking out the Dexter wedge. Unfortunately, that was the only fish I had on it.
back focusing on the bream and my expectations are high since the tide has started to ebb. As well as that triple shot you saw at the start of this video, the two mackerel and the place I had right at the very beginning, I did get two other small bream before the top of the tide which I didn't film. Regularly twitching the bait, as you see now, is a good tactic for the black bream here, but unfortunately this hasn't worked on this occasion. I am getting short spells of lightning fast bites which I can't hit and I just really should have scaled right down with much smaller hooks and small bits of squid perhaps and I might have caught a few more fish today. As well as twitching the bait sometimes slowly dragging it also works. When you put your rod back in a rest you can quite often get a take straight away even before your slack line has managed to tighten up. That's what's happened in this case, but unfortunately I missed a bite. And sometimes when you do miss a bite, you can get another one straight away, which is what I'm waiting for here. But again, that doesn't happen. Nevertheless, this is active fishing, which is what I enjoy the most. I suppose it's just sod's law. When you're trying to demonstrate a technique and expecting the fish to jump on, it just doesn't happen. Finally, having missed filming all the good bits in this session, one of the techniques pays off. Having dragged a rig, and before I could put the rod back on the rest, I finally get a proper take. Unfortunately, it's one of the smaller ones of this session. <laughs> 